Hello, in this video I'm going to approach the subject of myofascial release using Pilates principles and Pilates techniques at the same time. Uh, I'm only using a roller and this is one way you can get into this uh, area of myofascial release. But when you're using this, and you'll see this when we get into the technique, it bears very close correlation to some of the prone exercises from the Pilates mat work repertoire. And it's, I think it's really important that you have that understanding when you get into this technique, because otherwise you can potentially cause problems in your back. Now the area of myofascial release means we're talking about muscle and connective tissue, the fascia which envelops muscle bellies and flows as a scaffold throughout every aspect of our body. It's an area which has historically been a little bit neglected, but thankfully in recent years has become more prevalent in terms of people's awareness. And fascia is you know, a sensitive tissue, it is um, implicated in pain, it can become dysfunctional. The understanding of it is still probably a little bit uh, cloudy, and it sometimes kind of strays into the dark arts a little bit in terms of people's interpretation of it. But we can use um, a roller to get into some of these aspects. Now the other thing which we're going to get into is the fact that muscles will have different uh, consistencies, different densities, different types of elasticity in and throughout the muscle tendon unit. So when I've taught the basic rudimentary stretch techniques, it essentially is based on knowing where the origin of the muscle is, knowing where the insertion of the muscle is, and then moving the two parts away from each other which is a perfectly valid stretch technique. But often, if there is a part of a muscle which stretches a lot, that might be the bit which takes on the bulk of the stretch, and then you might get little pockets which, because of their density and tightness, maybe don't get quite as much attention. The techniques we're going to cover in this video also address that. So with your roller, you're going to be bringing it underneath uh, the top of your thighs. So you want it pretty high up to start with, and to be resting on your elbows. Now this is not far removed from the Sphinx position in the prone mat work series. And so we're thinking about things like the leg pull in prone preparation and the leg pull in prone itself here. And a familiar refrain in that type of exercise is we don't want our back dropping and arching. Or if you're pushing up into a dorsal raise, you don't want all the pressure going through your back. So that classic idea of pulling the belt line to the rib cage is something you think about right from the off as you begin this type of stretch. So you're maintaining, you're finding and maintaining your lumbar pelvic neutral, your Pilates center, engaging your core muscles and your superficial abdominal muscles to keep that anterior wall of the stomach primed and to help in maintaining your neutral position. From here, we're good to start moving as long as we maintain that awareness. And what I would start with is just tucking your toes underneath and then rolling forwards and backwards on your roller. Now the more you move the roller towards the knees, the more you might need to change the position of your hands. But also, the more you take of your body over this fulcrum, the more tendency there is to lose neutral and go into that collapsed state in the lumbar spine. A lot of people won't want to do that, it will feel very uncomfortable, and it's not really something you want to make a habit of. So this is where that awareness, pulling the belt line up to the ribcage, maintaining your core, maintaining your center, is really important as we begin to roll the length of the quadriceps. Now this is a really nice kind of massage feel. You're sharing the load between both legs and it should feel quite pleasant. You might notice little pockets of soreness. These can often be myofascial trigger points or they can just be tight muscles. It might be that the scar tissue, there might be uh, inflammation, there might be micro tears, who knows? But don't worry if you feel a little bit of sensitivity going over it. It may be that that abates as you continue. And there's this kind of potential for desensitizing the myofascial tissue. Now that can be quite a nice technique just by itself, a gentle rolling and not hammering it. Often people will need to put more pressure on one leg. So the leg that you want to put more pressure on, the opposite arm, you just bring up into a straight position and that rolls the pelvis slightly sideways. Now although we're changing the orientation of the pelvis, we don't want to lose the control and suddenly go into a lordotic extended state in the lumbar spine. So as you go into that position, make sure that that's being maintained on the front of the stomach. And then as you roll forwards and backwards, you're gonna notice more pressure on that uh, opposite leg. And that can be a nice way of targeting extra pockets of tightness, extra areas of myofascial restriction. If you want to take that a bit further, then keeping the toes tucked underneath on the 
non-stretched leg, you could bring that leg off the roller, but keeping it connected to the floor via your toes, and then you roll forwards and backwards, and that really kind of ups the ante in terms of the pressure going through the front of the quads. Now you can move on to the lateral quads a little bit by further rotating and adjusting. I often will bring my other leg into this position, and then I can roll up and down. Now it's very important when you're rolling up and down the lateral quads that you're not going into horrific levels of discomfort. You're just going to end up compressing the vastus lateralis, annoying the iliotibial tract, and although it's something you see a lot of people doing, flogging themselves up and down on a roller, it's actually a very counterproductive technique. We'll come back to the lateral quads in a moment, but what we can now do is maintaining our Pilates center, we can work into little pockets of tightness. Now when you find somewhere on one leg which feels a little bit tighter than the rest, hold that position on the roller and then bend the leg where you feel that tightness. And essentially we're now moving little bits of that muscle over the point of contact in the roller and it's a really nice way of kind of ironing out wrinkles. You can do this on both legs at the same time if you want to mimic the Pilates double leg kick, it's a really good exercise to do, as long as you're preventing that back from arching towards the floor and you're not feeling any discomfort in your spine, then this is a great technique to do because you're, again, killing multiple birds with one stone. Coming back to the lateral quads to finish, that's probably the technique I would favor. You roll up and down, but not too much pressure, find a spot, and then bend that knee. And as you bend it, you're gonna feel the tightness move over the point of contact and that can be a really great technique for getting to areas which might get missed in standard stretches. So we've covered how to use a roller, we've used our Pilates principles alongside that and incorporated the leg pull and prone preparation and the double leg kick. So that should give you a nice uh, backdrop to take on that next level of stretching if you find that sort of thing helpful. I know I sure do, and I know a lot of other people do. Final word about the rollers. This one is one of the kind of gnarly ones with bumps and lumps all over it. That's a little bit more um, perhaps sensitive for some people. You can get smoother rollers, softer rollers, less um, density in them. It's just a question of experimentation, but don't fall into the trap of hammering it up and down too much. It's just meant to be a gentle, moderate release technique, but hopefully, you get a lot out of it.